March is almost over. The days are thankfully getting longer. The sun is shining on my face more and I still just look much better than I actually feel. <laughs> Let's just get into it. Hey, hello, my name is Jojo and welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, welcome. Before I even get into like classes or anything, um, there was another strike. <laughs> it was very small though, uh, very short. Um, and this time it was for the student workers. So I was involved in that um, on a very, very minute scale um i didn't like go out and pick it or anything um because i truthfully it the days that they were out there picketing it was raining i don't like to be out in the rain um so i didn't i didn't go pick it but yeah the student workers at my school uh went on strike because <laughs> Uh, they had been attempting to negotiate with the school for a new and better contract for seven months and the school was just not budging. Thankfully though, it was a very short strike. It only lasted a few days. Um, but yeah, that is just another just wrench in the life that is being in my program because the fact that the school was able after a few days to finally concede on a few things and like meet the demands of our union reps um, means that like they could have done it for the entire seven months and just chose not to. And they just chose to let it get to this point um, when they didn't have to. It was very frustrating. It was a very frustrating process, especially because like I am not like super involved in the union. So I could only go based off of what was being sent in emails. So when I got the email that like a strike, uh, what is it? A strike approval vote was happening. I was like, oh, what's going on? And then the strike got approved and it was like, okay, if they don't, they have until this time on this day to come up with a better contract for us. And if they don't, then we're, we're going on strike. And so I'm like, I TA, I'm a research assistant. So now I'm like, is this gonna affect my paychecks? <laughs> like screw, honestly, like I was not concerned about like not being in the classroom. I was not concerned about like anything else. My concern was, am I going to get a paycheck still? <laughs> and the answer was, we're not sure. Um, the school may or may not decide to stop paychecks if we strike, um, but if they do, then we have a backup plan. And I was like, cool. I'm still getting paid. <laughs> uh, thankfully, the strike wasn't long enough to like, I think seriously impact anyone's paychecks. Everyone still got paid in a timely manner when the next paycheck was due, I think. I, I haven't seen anyone complain about not getting a paycheck. So I think the strike was brief enough that it didn't really like cause too much disruption, but it still happened and it was unnecessary. And it's just so like disgusting and upsetting to see that the school is so willing to let things always get to this point when they don't have to simply because they don't wanna pay people to be able to survive in New York City. <laughs> it's, it's disgusting. Um, but anyway, yeah, I just wanted to say that that happened again. Um, hopefully it is the last strike <laughs> that happens for a while um because i'm tired all right so on to classes um so psychology of sexuality is still going well um i had a paper for that due a couple of weeks ago and i now have another paper due next week <laughs> um it's just the papers just keep on happening i feel like they happen so quickly after one another um yeah, i'm not gonna lie I have fallen off on the readings just a just a tad in that class. Um, it's just there's just so many readings and I have so little time. And as far as like my priority list goes, <laughs> readings are not very high up on my on my priority list. Um, 
but the readings that I do manage to get done are very interesting. And the discussions that happen in class are both so interesting and also so funny. <laughs> it's one of those classes where like it's full of people who are just absolutely unfiltered. Um, and so everyone is just quite literally saying, or it seems like everyone is just quite literally saying the first thing that comes to their mind in any given moment. And the professor is just kind of up there like bantering back and forth and like enabling the chaos of the discussion. And it's, it's, it's just hilarious. I sometimes take a back seat in the discussions because at some point I just feel like okay this is not really my ballpark anymore <laughs> and I just have to listen but it's been it's been a fun time in that class honestly as far as my other class clinical externship seminar goes um or rather what is it clinical consultation and supervision this semester that's going fine as well um I had my first peer supervision meeting with the first year student that I was paired with um, we started talking about the case that she wants to use our space to talk about. Um, it's such an interesting case. Um, and yeah, we're just like both really excited. Um, so we have, unfortunately, we only have two meetings left. We're, we are only required to meet three times for the semester. Um, and we've only had one so far, so we have two left, but we are so excited to discuss what we can in those three meetings um and also i have to present about my peer supervision experience in my class um and i think my presentation is in a few weeks i think in like three no i'm lying almost almost a month a few days shy of a month away um and basically what that's gonna entail is just like me showing a recording of one of the peer supervision meetings and just kind of talking about what the experience was like uh what i learned what sh feedback she gave me based on the experience all of that um and yeah i'm just i'm this is like the the part of the class that i was most excited for um other than that uh we're just meeting every week and talking like we normally do um it's really just a, a class where we sit and talk for an hour and 40 minutes <laughs> so that's really it with classes you would think that because i don't have a full course load this semester that things would feel easier and it just does not like i i'm really struggling to keep up with readings for different things not even just with class but also with like my externship didactics which i'll talk about in a second um but it's just my time just feels so limited like i have so much to do and just not not enough time to do it um and i'm really struggling to keep up in different spaces currently <laughs> okay so on to clinical work first and foremost externship match happened the day came and went um i vlogged that entire experience if you haven't seen that video i will link it up above um that day was crazy uh, or at least that morning that morning was crazy but yeah it happened i matched i matched at a va um for next year and so next year because i'm not taking any classes um in the fall at least i will have to take a class in the spring but in the fall i will not be taking any classes so i will be seeing patients at both externship sites both the VA, which is my new full-time site next year, and my current externship site that I will be continuing at part-time next year. Um, I will be seeing patients at both. I am really excited and also kind of nervous because I feel like in my mind, I'm telling myself that I can handle having that many patients at once um, because I'm not taking any classes next year but also but i have also recently taken on new employment positions at the school <laughs> for next year um that will require more time for me as well and that all kind of happened unexpectedly um 
so I yeah I'm I'm not gonna think about it too much right now but I'm just, I just know that like that's that's the thing I'm gonna have to worry about <laughs> as far as my current externship goes it is going well still um, I have started talking about termination with the few patients that I will not be continuing with next year I am only gonna be continuing with like two maybe three of them we'll see um, but yeah I've started talking about termination the ones that I am saying goodbye to I'm very sad about <laughs> and the ones that i am continuing with the next year the ones that i know for sure i'm continuing with next year um i'm really excited about that uh, it's just it's it's getting to that point in the treatment where it's like very bittersweet because it's like you're saying goodbye but also like you still got to talk about like the shit that's happening in their life knowing that like okay in a few months we're not going to be meeting anymore so like we should start to like talk about that <laughs> it's it's like a delicate balance um but yeah that's happening like i mentioned i'm just in didactics i'm really struggling to keep up with the readings for that so i'm not gonna lie i have not done a, a single reading for my extra trip didactics in a few weeks now um but i'm still showing up and i'm still trying to engage in the conversation um but it's just it's also felt kind of weird in didactics lately um it just feels like there's been some sort of like dynamic shift in the room um just broadly amongst the group but then also with me personally a weird sort of interaction happened with not even directly with but like indirectly and it's it's hard to explain because i i can't i don't want to say too much about it but i had like a weird sort of indirect interaction with the director of the clinic um like through my supervisor like through my primary supervisor there was like an indirect communication to me from the director of the clinic um that just felt very much like you could have just came to me <laughs> you know like you could have just came directly to me to address this question or concern you had but you chose to relay the message through my supervisor which feels weird and i know the director probably had really good intentions and didn't mean it in like any sort of malicious way but as a, as a trainee and as a student in a position of lesser power it just feels like a power move that didn't need to be pulled you know <laughs> so that's actually something that I spoke to my supervisor about recently and will in the coming weeks address with the director directly and demonstrate to her how direct communication works <laughs> anyway no she's a super nice woman I've spoken to her she's super nice um, I just didn't like how she went about handling this particular situation um, and it's made me feel somewhat uncomfortable in the spaces lately, um, especially spaces that I'm in with her. So I'm just going to address it and get it out of the way so that when I return next year, there's like nothing lingering from this year at all um, other than my patients. So anyway, yeah, that's how clinical work is going. Um, yeah. Okay. And then research. So updates on research. The journal submission was invited for revise and resubmit when i got the initial email i saw it come in and like my heart dropped <laughs> um and i opened it just briefly enough to read that it got invited for revision and then resubmission like i read the word revision and then like the next sentence was like something something if you decide to resubmit and then the instructions and i was like oh revise and resubmit okay cool and then i <laughs> i closed it and that was it like i was like i don't want to read anything else right now um my heart couldn't handle anything else and so i emailed my advisor and told her like oh my god we got invited for a revise and resubmit and she had asked me like when is the revision due? And I was like, oh shit, yeah, there is a due date, isn't there? So then I opened it again 
and scroll down past like all of the reviewer comments to see when the revision was due and I got the date and then I sent it to her and I closed it again. Um, and then I didn't actually go back to look at any of the feedback for two weeks. Um, I needed time to just like let it just sit for a while. Like my brain needed to adjust to the fact that this was something that happened. And then finally I went back to read the comments. I was terrified to read the comments because I was like, oh my God, they probably tore me to shreds. They probably think it's terrible. And then I was like, well, no, if they thought it was terrible, they wouldn't invite it for resubmission. So like, they probably don't think it's terrible, but like they, they did probably tear you to shreds. Um, and so I opened the comments and four different people reviewed my submission, which my advisor said is like, very rare but it's also like a really good sign because usually what the way the process works is that the editor will send out like quite like send out a request for reviewers for your paper and like it, you, they like give them the title of the paper and the abstract and like ask people like if they're interested in reviewing and they usually send it out to like a bunch of people because they're anticipating that most people are going to decline the review and they're only going to get like one or two people who are interested in reviewing the paper but the fact that four different people reviewed my paper means that my paper sounded interesting enough to them that they were interested in reading it and giving feedback which my advisor says is really good the downside to having four different people review your paper is that you now have comments and feedback from four different people and some of that feedback contradicts other feedback <laughs> <laughs> which definitely happened in my case um but overall the comments were very like supportive of my research very affirming of how important the work is that i'm doing the paper they said the paper was like very well written there just were some things i needed to clarify um it was it was it was <laughs> like overall the comments were like overwhelmingly good which I was absolutely shocked by. So I completed that revision. The due date was yesterday, actually. I submitted it the day before yesterday. Um, and yeah, now it's the waiting game again. I actually don't really know how it works from this point. I don't know if it's possible for them to send back another revise and resubmit. Like, I don't know how many times that can happen before they just uh, like outright reject the paper. <laughs> Um, but if that can happen, then the options from this point are either they accept the paper as is with my new revisions, or they say, okay, this is better, but we still need some tweaks. Here's another offer for revise and resubmit, or they just outright reject my paper. And then I have to try again at another journal. Um, that's where we're at right now with the manuscript. I am just kind of like going to do what I did before and Put it out of my mind for the time being so that i can focus on other things um because the night i submitted the revision i my brain was just like i was like oh my god did i did i do this did i do that did i double check this did I, I i can't <laughs> i need to just put it out of my mind for the time being until i get another email about it so yeah i will continue to update y'all on how that is going um other research things the co-authored paper that i'm working on we did a second draft of it um, and I haven't heard anything about it since. Like the lead author hasn't sent out any emails about anything. Um, I did check the shared document that we are working off of the other day and we still have to like fully flesh out the discussion section. Um, but before we can do that, the lead author wants to like go through the other sections and make sure those are really clean um but i haven't heard anything about it for a couple of weeks now um so i don't know if just she's a bit behind on work and so she hasn't checked it yet or if she's waiting on like something from our advisor I, i'm not really sure what's going on with it it's kind of just sitting there right now um but i did my part i worked on the sections i was supposed to work on i did them i finished them so i'm just gonna wait to hear back about that as well and then yeah, my proposal. <laughs> um, I actually have to work on that later on today. Um, I, I am just, my proposal makes me so anxious. <laughs> 
thinking about it, talking about it, working on it just all makes me so very anxious. I'm gonna keep this very brief. Um, I'm working on it. I've met with my advisor about it. She says the drafts of portions of it that I've sent her look really good. I have not looked at feedback on any of the section drafts that I have sent her yet. Um, I've sent them, she sent back feedback, and then I just haven't really looked at them. I'm just working on other sections. <laughs> um, but eventually I have to go back to that feedback and make edits. Um, but yeah, I am supposed to be defending my proposal at the end of May. Um, and so that means that this has to be done by the end of April first couple of weeks of May at the latest so that she has enough time to review it before I send it out to the rest of my committee. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna stop talking about it now. Okay, so overall feelings. Um, Y'all already know, I, I don't have to say it. I'm tired. I said it anyway, I'm tired. <laughs> um, it is really like that point where I am just, it's just kind of like taking it day by day, quite literally. Um, I have more or less had to like stop thinking about my weeks in like the full span of a week. Like what am I gonna get done this week? Or what do I need to get done this week? And it's just like, I wake up every day and I'm like, okay, what do I need to get done today? And actually like, what can I get done today? And then just like forget everything else. like what do i personally have the energy to get done today because i can no longer like work past my own limits my body does not let me work past my own limits anymore like when my brain and body are tired everything shuts down i cannot focus i was reading something the other day and i got to a point in the reading where like the sentences just stopped making sense. And like, there was one sentence in particular that I reread like 20 times and just could not make sense of it. And it wasn't a complicated sentence. It was just like where the commas were placed, my brain couldn't read it properly. And so I had to read it out loud to myself finally in order to make sense of the sentence. And then at that point I was like, yeah, no, I need to, I'm, I, I'm gonna put this down for the day. I'm gonna put it down for the day, come back to it tomorrow finish it then um, I just when my body says stop it no longer asks me for permission it stops it stops working um, <laughs> so I can no longer be like okay this is what I need to get done today and even though I'm exhausted I'm gonna keep working I can't do that anymore um, when I'm tired I just stop which means that a lot less gets done every day however I, I'm able to stay focused for ex like longer periods of time now because my brain is just like, okay, I'm just gonna focus on this one thing and whether or not this one thing gets done and that's all I need to worry about right now. So like the other day I was working on my revision and I like sat and worked on my revision for like a solid two and a half hours without stopping for anything. Um, which has not happened in a very long time. Like the whole first half of the semester, I couldn't focus on anything for more than like 20 minutes. Um, but I was able to sit and work for like a solid two and a half hours before I took a break. Um, so it's so like give and take, like I can focus more like on one thing for a longer period of time, but that means I'm no longer getting more than one thing or two things done in a day, which I'm I'm struggling to decide which is worse, you know? <laughs> but the point is that work is getting done. <laughs> and my mental health just like really, it's been struggling. Um, and so having to like really kind of like push through those days has just been a lot. Um, but we only have, six, seven, six or seven weeks left in the semester. Um, and that sounds like a really long time, 
but I'm just hoping that like it really flies by. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go. That's it for this update. <laughs> Thank you for watching, especially if you made it all the way to the end. I truly appreciate it. Um, leave me a comment down below if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos. As always, like, share, and subscribe, and click that little notification bell so you don't miss my next upload, and I'll see you in my next one.